In today's quick tip video, I'm going to answer some of the most common questions I get from folks when they pick up a new used oscilloscope, maybe an old digital scope like this, or even an old analog scope, and it didn't come with probes. Probably the number one question that I get asked is, do I have to get probes that match the bandwidth of the oscilloscope that I have? Now the quick answer to that question is no, but there are some considerations to think about. If your probe's bandwidth is less than that of the oscilloscope, then your operational bandwidth is going to be limited by the probe, and you won't achieve the full bandwidth of your scope. On the other hand, if your probe's bandwidth exceeds that of your oscilloscope's bandwidth, then your operational bandwidth is going to be limited by the scope and not the probe. Now that being said, there's a couple of other considerations you've got to think about. You generally don't want to use a probe that greatly exceeds the bandwidth of the oscilloscope, and vice versa. You, you don't want to use a 10x passive probe whose bandwidth is much, much less than the oscilloscope. And the reason for that is probe compensation. Now, I've talked about probe compensation in previous videos, and I'll link them down below. But the reason that you've got to consider probe compensation is that this adjustment can only compensate for a certain range of capacitance as presented by the scope input. And uh, generally, the lower speed scopes are going to have a higher input capacitance, higher speed scopes are going to have a lower input capacitance. Similarly, wider bandwidth probes will have a narrower or smaller compensation range, or, or that, what that means is a lower range of capacitances that it can be compensated for, whereas the lower speed probes can generally compensate for larger input capacitances. Sometimes they'll overlap, but sometimes those ranges might not overlap. So you do have to take that into consideration. So for example, here's a P6139 oscilloscope probe rated for 500 megahertz. It can be used with scopes whose input capacitance is between 8 and 18 picofarads. So that's the compensation range. Now here is a P2220 probe. It's rated at 200 megahertz bandwidth. Its compensation range is 15 to 25 picofarads. So you can see there's very little overlap in the usable compensation range between this 200 megahertz probe and the 500 megahertz probe I just showed. So what this means is it's very important for you to take a look at your oscilloscope and take a look at what the input capacitance is on that oscilloscope and that is your second main criteria for selecting a 10x probe for that scope. Many scopes will actually print the input capacitance right on the scope face. You can see for this Tektronix 2467 1 mega ohm and 15 picofarads. And this older 485 oscilloscope is 1 mega ohm and 20 picofarads. So the main lesson here is to ensure that you select an oscilloscope probe whose compensation range includes the input capacitance of your scope. Most uh, probes, even like this uh, 350 megahertz example from Caltest Electronics, will give you the probe's rated compensation range. Now one other interesting tidbit is that, well, what happens if the oscilloscope bandwidth and the probe bandwidth match, wouldn't the cascade of those two things result in a lower bandwidth? And I would say in most cases that would be true. So if you matched a 200 megahertz probe to a 200 megahertz oscilloscope, you might achieve a little bit less than 200 megahertz. Tektronix, by the, on the other hand, uh, when they've rated uh, the probe bandwidth, the intent was to rate that probe so that if you matched it up with a scope of equal bandwidth, you'd achieve the scope bandwidth. So that kind of implies that the Tektronix rated probe bandwidth is a little bit understated because it has to actually have a little bandwidth greater than the scope bandwidth in order to let the scope achieve its full bandwidth when used. But that's probably more the exception rather than the rule. So in general, if you're not matching, say, a Tektronix probe to a Tektronix scope, it's probably okay to select a probe whose bandwidth is a little bit greater than the oscilloscope bandwidth that you're using so that you can achieve the full rated scope bandwidth when used in combination. Now, of course, one other thing to keep in mind is that the probe's compensation range is not the same thing as the probe input impedance or input capacitance. The input impedance or input capacitance is the amount of capacitive loading that the probe will present to your circuit when you're probing it. The compensation range is the input, comp input capacitance of the scope that the probe can be adjusted for. One other consideration is whether or not you want to get a probe that has this identification pin that tells the scope that it's a 10x probe. Scopes that use this will have a ring around the BNC connector that senses that pin. It will automatically adjust the scale for you. You'll notice the 
uh, vertical scale now says 1x. When I connect up this probe, we can see that it moved to 10x. So this way you don't make a mistake in your vertical scale due to the attenuation of the probe. Now not all oscilloscopes have the little sense feature to sense when a 10x probe is attached. So in that case, you'd have to manually set the probe attenuation in your vertical menu to 10x when you're using the 10x probe. You certainly can use probes that have got this 10x pin with scopes that don't use it. Just the pin won't do anything. There's a small chance that it might scratch the front surface of your scope face, but I generally found that it's usually not a problem. Now finally, all this discussion on probe bandwidth and compensation really only applies to, say, 10x probes or 100x probes. It doesn't really apply to 1x probes, because 1x probes don't get compensated. And in general, 1x probes are going to be lower in bandwidth, typically somewhere between 5 and 10 megahertz of bandwidth. So they can be used really with a scope with any, any bandwidth. But for 10x probes, I think the overall recommendation is use a probe that is equal to or maybe a little bit greater than your oscilloscope bandwidth. And most important, ensure that the probe's compensation range includes the input capacitance of your particular scope. I hope you enjoyed this little quick tip video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you hadn't subscribed to the channel already, please consider doing so. And thanks again as always for watching.